Okay. Our next uh, speaker is Wade Stewart, and he's our newest member, and he's with Stewart and Sons Computer Services, LLC. Okay, so I didn't bring any handouts today, but I kind of thought it would be nice to do a little get to know you thing since I am kind of new. Um, so I started in IT in 94. My first job was working for a company that designed the software called Build Your Own Railroad. And have you ever seen those simulations programs where you, you know, like the sim family thing and you guide a family or, you know, the simulation city, a bit of city. This is all about a railroad. And it was one of the first ones that actually gave you this 3D view. You're riding in the train and seeing the trees go by, right? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, well, it was super popular, believe it or not, in 1994. So, um, uh, so my job was boxing the software and putting it in shrink wrap and, and shipping it. Um, and then one day I got a job. Uh, I got a, they, the support guys were out. There was only two of them. And they were out and they had a support call from Australia. And so I had to talk to this guy from Australia on how to use the software. So that's kind of what got me started. And from there I went to, I was a technician, I was a purchasing agent, I was assistant manager of a uh, computer rental store in Chicago. Um, long story short, it got me back up to the Pacific Northwest and um, where uh, after working for a big company, I worked for Accenture. I was their network administrator in Seattle. So we were responsible for about 1,500 <laughs> 1,500 laptops and desktops, and then um, about 50 servers. And then uh, the dot-com bust hit, so I got to work for a uh, architectural firm. And so they had like 20, 35 people. And uh, what they had been doing was, um, whenever they had an IT problem, they would just go to the phone book or go online and see who was awesome mm -hmm. and who had the best ad, right? And then call them up, yeah, will you come in and fix our IT for us? And, and, and most of these guys weren't very good, um, frankly. And they would come in and, and kind of make a mess of things and charge, you know, 250 bucks an hour and then walk away. Uh, so within two months of me starting there, and by the way, when I started, I walked in the door and they said, we don't know what you do. This is your desk. Talk to you later. And uh, <laughs> so they had no idea, but they needed somebody IT full time. To, to take care of things because they felt like they needed it. Um, so two months later, the main server dies, just kind of quits. I had barely gotten through the assessment of all the equipment that they had. I had found out that half the machines didn't even have antivirus on them. Um, it, was, it was just a nightmare and just trying to piece together the thing and get it all running and then all of a sudden the server dies. So there's a recovery password for the server so I get a hold of the people that hired me and said, okay, in this list of passwords you had, where's the recovery password? And they said, well, we don't know. Call the last IT guy. So I called the last IT guy and he says, no, we don't remember those. We give them to the customer and we walk away. We don't want any responsibility for what's going to happen. So we just forget the password. So um, a $250 phone call to Microsoft later who also couldn't help us. Uh, we were rebuilding a server over the weekend. So I worked for about 36 hours straight, um, slept in the president's uh, comfy couch and uh, while waiting for alarms to go off so that I could get up and load software again because this was the time when we had CDs that we loaded software from instead of the internet. And when we did have an internet, it was DSL. So it was very, very, very slow. So long story short, I learned a very interesting lesson about how IT people conduct themselves, at least in this area. Um, in Tacoma and I found like there was a real opportunity for somebody who knew what he was doing and was a little bit more ethical enough to actually care to take care of the customers so that if they did call down the road you could say yeah no problem I'll help you with that uh, I don't want to abandon you and spent and then they lost three days three bill three days they w it happened on a Wednesday so their staff of 35 architects who get billed out at $150 an hour were not doing anything for three days. So it, it, it's a tremendous amount of money. Um, and, and, I, and I took that really seriously as an employee, and I take it even more seriously as a business owner. So anyway, so I, <clears throat> I, I worked for uh, BLRB Architects is the one there downtown Tacoma, and they're a fantastic um, group to work for. We got their IT just slicker than anything. I mean, they've got a great server room now. It's, it's wonderful, and it kind of runs itself. 
they, they were my first client when I started my own business. And the amount of work that I have to do for them is really not that much. So they don't need enough full-time IT staff, even though they've now grown to 60 employees in four locations in the Pacific Northwest. They can still manage that with my team of three. So <clears throat> it's not too bad. So I said, okay, well, I want to have a good ethical business and I want to have uh, good people. So I would hire, I went out to hire people that worked for Microsoft. I'd work, hire people that worked for these big companies that really knew what they were doing, not the kid who knows how to fix his grandma's computer and says, oh, I can install servers, that's easy. Um, so we, we kind of, I kind of hire for that, that better level of support. Um, when I was just starting out, um, I worked for, um, as I worked for BLRB, I worked for one of the architects there who uh, invited me to a Rotary cl uh, Club event, an auction one time. And I got to go, and one of the things they had hanging up on the wall was the four-way test. And that's basically the ethical ways that we conduct business as Rotarians. And I was like, okay, wait a minute, this totally goes with what I want to do with my business. I want to be the guy that people could rely on that is not going to just take the money and run, is not going to um, uh, tell them something they don't need, uh, which was one of the other problems that the other IT guys did for my, for my architectural firm, is they sold them something they didn't need. They grew out of it within a month. It was ridiculous. Um, and they spent a lot of money and a lot of IT, IT tech time. They spent 20 hours putting the server together at like 180, 200 bucks an hour. Just a massive amount of money. Now, architects aren't some of the bigger ones, or they have deep pockets, but they're not that deep. I mean, that, that was just amazing to me. So, uh, so learning about Rotary and the four-way test, and I decided, oh, I'm sold. I want to be a Rotarian because I'm, they have the values that I want to have, and I want to align myself with other businesses that conduct themselves that way. So um, that's kind of where I started from, where I went, and how I got here. Um, so a little bit about who some of my customers are. So I want to share a few customers that are kind of interesting. Um, I have um, a, a jewelry repair company who, on the, on the surface, you think jewelry repair, what, that, that can't be much, you know, you fix a ring or something like that. They have an operation you wouldn't believe. They have like 35 jewelers in this, I won't call it a sweatshop, but if you were to imagine where jewelers would work, 35 jewelers in a room about three times the size of this one, um, it kind of resembles one. And they crank through five, about 5,000 pieces of jewelry a day. They ship it all overnight, FedEx. Um, they have integrations, they've integrated their computer system and their database repair system with like Zale, right? Big jewelry company. So this, all this stuff is all running 24 seven critical, critical IT systems because they have, um, if you can't, sh they get a, they get, they're contracted a penalty if they can't ship and they meet a deadline, it's $5,000 fine that they have to pay to the vendor that, now they get, obviously they're pushing $50,000 worth of repairs a day, so maybe that's not a big thing, but it's big enough that you kind of want to watch it, right? So um, they rely on us to make sure that, that IT, all those IT services run, and they run all the time, and they run really well. And they also pay a monthly call, or a monthly amount, so that we can just be a phone call away. So um, they got a new computer yesterday and said, well, we just got a new computer, can you be here today? I'm like, well, yep, you pay for that, so we will. <laughs> you know, so um, we try and be uh, available for that. Uh, another client, which I had a lot of fun working for, um, was is a forensic um, he's a forensics guy so what does he do he studies blood spatters he studies shotgun blasts he studies all the stuff you see on CSI and by the way that Grissom character on CSI they they modeled that character after this guy so so I got so that was really really cool I got to go into his lab in his in his ba basement You'd think it was something out of CSI. They got the electron microscopes. He's got lab techs. He's got all this stuff right in University Place. So I was like, wow, this is great. So one time he came to the office and I called my wife because she's a big murder death fan. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I said, remember that guy I told you about? And she's and she, because we live like six blocks or six minutes, six, six tenths of a mile away. 
And I call her and say, remember that guy I was telling you about? Well, he's here if you want to meet him. And the phone just went click. And, and, then, and then she scooted over and got to meet this guy that you know, she was just crazy about. So um, really fascinating guy to work with. Um, he likes to go on tangents and talk about and show me the videos of this uh, slow motion. He does ballistics. He does his own ballistics. So it's a slow motion video of bullets flying through the air and stuff. And I, was like, I just did this yesterday out at the, out of the quarry or whatever. And I'm like, wow, OK, that's really cool. So cool customers like that. Um, well, like Dexter, though, right? No, no, no. I, don't, I suppose he could be. If there was a guy that could get away with something, this, this, this guy. Yeah, yeah. He has, he has he's kind of like got a shelf around his whole uh, lab like this. And there are certificates. Of I all the no, we had to do a data recovery, and um, I told I had this uh, part-time kid helping us out, and we were watching him obviously, and said, "You can't look at any pictures. You can recover them, but you can't look at them." And he said, "Well, I kind of have to look once in a while to make sure that what I'm copying is is working." And I said, "That's fine. Do it very limited, and 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 be cool with it." And um, and so he did, and he did it a couple times, and he said, okay, I'm not going to look at any more of those because that was a little too much. So it's, it, was, yeah, it was amazing. So anyway, um, I digress because that's a fun client. Um, we also have our niche, of course, when I worked for an architectural firm, I found a niche with architects, engineers, and construction companies. So I know their business really well. I worked for an architect for eight years, so I know what importance IT has in architecture. So if they say they need AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, or something like that, um, uh, we, have, we have familiarity with it. I've done the licensing for it. I've done the installation, supporting it, whatever. So we're very knowledgeable about that. Um, uh, so, that's, so that's kind of like a, an idea of some of the customers that we have. We have about 20 uh, clients that pay us month for month to month services. And some of those are monitoring and maintenance. Sometimes they're just remote service. So they could get, um, just pay a little bit. It's like 10 bucks a month per computer. And we just have remote access. So if you have a problem, you can call instead of having to wait for somebody to show up. And we can fix the computer. A lot of the time, we can fix it. If you can get on the web, we can probably fix it. So even if you have a virus, if you can get on the web, we can, we can actually do a remote uh, safe, safe mood mode boot and be able to remove viruses and stuff uh, remotely. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's see, what else? So like I said, I didn't bring a whole lot. I kind of wanted to save a little bit of time for questions or something like that. So go right ahead. I am uh, both, actually. Um, uh, so I, had a, I, I had a client yesterday. Yeah, I, I had a client. Um, I was visiting a client. And we were looking at, we were talking about computers, and he had a Mac, and we were sitting in a coffee shop, and the person next to me had a, had a, oh, had a Mac, and he had a PC. And so he's like, so what do you recommend for somebody like this? And he just kind of described a customer. And I said, well, if, if they're not really familiar with computers a whole lot, and they struggle a little bit with um, uh, how complex a computer can be, and maybe they don't use it for a whole lot other than browsing the web or checking email or doing some simple stuff, then a Mac might be a really good fit, especially because it's really reliable. It's not as much of a target for uh, malware as Windows machines are. We have to put so much stuff on a Windows machine just to keep it safe. Uh, on a Mac, you don't really have to do nearly as much. So I kind of, it kind of really depends. I like to fit the best solution for whoever's, whoever's asking. So. A little bit of both. Any other questions? No, no virus questions. I always get a virus question. Um, what? Oh, what virus question would you like? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always don't go to those sites, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. That's uh, you know no. That's actually uh, that that is probably one of the most common questions is. How do I stop getting viruses? And um, how do I stop getting, getting these things? Um, because I keep getting infected. So if you keep getting infected, you, you need to analyze what it is that you were doing just before that happened and, <laughs> and try not to do that anymore. Um, but, if, but if they can't do that, and I had, uh, here's a great example. I was an architecture firm, 
had um, a spec writer. And what a spec writer does is he researches all the products that go into a building. So he researches the paint and the wall and, and how these things go together and what kind of adhesives are being used. And in the process of doing all this research, he's doing a bunch of web searches. So he does a web search for this and he clicks the link, clicks the link, clicks the link. Well, some of these manufacturer pages don't do a very good job in securing their websites. So you click a link to a website that's compromised, it compromises your computer. So how do we, how do we avoid that? There's a, there's a free tool called Web of Trust, which is, which is my favorite. And what it does is it, in, it integrates itself into your web browser. And when you do a Google search, it, you get the list of the results and it puts a little circle next to each result. And if it's a green circle, it's, it should be safe. If it's a yellow circle, you might not want to do it. And if it's a red circle, it's porn. Or I don't know, it's, it's, it's terrible and you shouldn't go there. Um, and, and terrible can mean a number of things. It could be compromised. It could also be trying to sell you something. You know, there, there's a lot of scams out there and they'll want to take your personal information. So it's not necessarily that you're going to infect your computer, but you could compromise, your, could compromise the security of your computer or you could give up your identity, which is even worse. So, okay. Thank you.